One of the most recognizable vehicles ever produced by Mercedes-Benz is the W124 E-Class. It sold 2,562,143 units worldwide, but only 10,479 came with the 500 designation. Our spotlight is on this 1994 Mercedes-Benz E500 sedan. It is not to be confused with the AMG Hammer, but this executive sedan was one of the fastest production cars in 1994. We're going to go over absolutely everything you need to know about this, what makes this different from that AMG Hammer, and everything else you need to know if you're in the market for the W124 Mercedes E-Class. Now, the earliest E-Class we featured was the W114 1976 Mercedes-Benz 280. We featured two other W124s. We have the 1988 300E and the 1995 A124 E320 convertible. But this 1994 E500 is the best example, especially when comparing it to the latest generation. We're doing an episode on the W213 E-Class. You can watch that video after we're publishing this one first. But legendary Mercedes designer Bruno Sacco finalized the design on this car, and it was in close cooperation with Porsche. And that's where we're gonna be talking about the difference between the AMG hammer and this velvet hammer, because a lot of people get the two of them confused. Yes, this was in collaboration with Porsche. In fact, Porsche had to assemble most of the vehicle because it was too wide to fit down the assembly line at Mercedes-Benz. It took 18 days for them to assemble this car. It started at Porsche's plant, and then it was hand assembled, transported to Mercedes-Benz for them to paint the car. It was sent back to Porsche for them to put the engine into the vehicle and completion was done back at Mercedes-Benz for final inspection and deliver 18 days. That's a lot. Cars today, they're a lot quicker than that. A day or two, depending on the type of vehicle. Assembly lines are so modernized and roboticized that it just doesn't take time at all. But this being hand assembled was one of the reasons why it took 18 days for them to be done. And the fact that they made over 10,000 of this specific type of car is incredible when you consider it. So I get the reason why Porsche had to actually assemble most of it is just because those wider fenders would not fit. On top of the flared fenders, it also had side skirts, a front air dam, and wider track for the wider tires. So overall, this car is much more different than the typical W124 E-Class. So before I get into the specifics of the engine, let's talk about the AMG Hammer and the Velvet Hammer. So AMG was not a division of Mercedes-Benz back when this car was new. We talked about that we did the W202 C36 AMG. That was the first vehicle fully built by AMG, but AMG at the time was not related at all, really, to Mercedes-Benz. They were actually tuning other vehicles. You can find AMG vehicles that were not Mercedes-Benz because they were an independent tuning house. So they took the W124 and they created their own version of a serious performance vehicle. It really was a halo car for Mercedes, but it wasn't really a Mercedes because AMG took it on their own. So Mercedes, they wanted to have their own version. They wanted to do it in-house and make something that was a little bit more livable for day-to-day -day use, but still have that performance and also look a little bit different than the regular one. So that's why they came out with their own version. They called it the Velvet Hammer because it was still just as fast as the Hammer, but a little bit more refined and a little bit more livable on a daily basis. So keep that in mind. AMG Hammer, its own little car, obviously looks a lot like this, but it was tuned by AMG. The E500 that you see here was co-worked with with Porsche. So that's why there's a lot of confusion. I'm hoping that that does not confuse you anymore, but keep in mind, this is not the hammer. Now this vehicle was only available in North America for the 1992 to 1994 model years. So three model years for this. We've got the last year of production for it, for the E500, and it is one of the best examples. You can find a lot of people have probably modified them by this point, but this one is what we like to call OEM+. Plus. It's got a little bit of extra Mercedes bits on it, but essentially as original as you can expect for a 25-year-old car. The engine is a naturally aspirated 5-liter V8 derived from the R129 500SL, along with the front brakes from it. The 94 received 320 millimeter discs from the 600 SL and the rear brakes were 278 millimeters from the 500 SL. This took a lot of tech from the SL Roadster and put it into a car. They essentially wanted to make a four door version of that, which it's funny. You take a look at the new AMG GT and they have an AMG GT four door. So maybe you can kind of think of this as the first version of that. 
the M119 motor is a 32 valve dual overhead cam, produces 322 horsepower, 354 pound feet of torque, really impressive numbers for a 1994. This was one of the fastest production vehicles at the time, and it still is very quick considering this is 25 years old. And again, we're doing a retrospective on the 2019 E450 Mercedes, and they are pretty close on paper, so keep that in mind. So we talked about the brakes, right? They sound pretty impressive, but most owners will upgrade them to something with a little bit more bite. Owners like the previous owner of this car upgraded the brakes to larger discs and Brembos off the special Silver Aero Mercedes SL. It is a special edition of the SL600 that had better brakes, and if you can put those on because they pretty much just bolt on, you'll have better grip because really this car doesn't stop that great with the original brakes off of it. Also, in the case of this car, the brake lines have been upgraded to stainless steel ones, a great thing to do on any older car. The last thing you want to be doing is driving, not even fast, but driving in general and have a brake line failure. So that's something that we usually talk about at the end when we go over some of the maintenance and things to look out for. It's not a bad thing to upgrade if you're buying a car like this. The front shocks on this have also been upgraded to Bilstein's, but the original self-leveling rear suspension it remains, even though it does have a slightly lower ride height over the regular W124. As we mentioned, it sits almost an inch lower than that car, and I think it has a really good stance with the flared fenders, lower stance. It's a really good looking car, and especially compared to the modern version, and the proportions are pretty darn close, especially when you look at other 25 year comparisons of cars, the W124 and W213 are pretty darn close. Us lucky people here in North America got the pretty much fully loaded version of the E500 that was sold here. Pretty much the only thing that you could add on as a dealer option was the CD player or a car phone. Everything else was pretty much fully loaded. As I mentioned, 10,479 were produced globally, 1,500 or so were produced for the US, and only 45 made it up here to Canada. One last thing to note about the exterior, these are 18-inch Brabus multi-piece rims. They're from the same era, and you might have been able to even get them on the car from the factory, but they more or less are period correct for this vehicle, and again, giving this car an OEM plus look. Interior has gray leather, which you would expect on a fully loaded vehicle. Interior design is pretty similar to what we've seen on the W140 Mercedes S-Class. You have a rear sunshade, eh, that's more or less it. We'll talk a little bit more about the interior when we jump into it, but very nicely set up considering this is a 25-year-old car. And again, you have to keep in mind Mercedes for luxury wasn't about technology. It's something that we're going to be talking about later on. Their definition of luxury back in the day was comfort ride and handling and then with this car a little bit more performance oriented so it wasn't really about how much tech you could fit in it but overall luxury so we're going to be going over that and seeing how a luxury less vehicle performs today and everything else you need to know about the 1994 mercedes e500 unlike the w213 mercedes e-class that only comes in north america with forced induction this is eight cylinders of naturally aspirated glory. And that means when I put my foot down, I haven't got to wait for any turbos to spool up. I just put it down and we're off. I'm telling you, there's really nothing like driving a classic Mercedes like this. It just feels fantastic on the road. A little tighter actually on this. I was surprised the width on this is a little tighter than it is on the new one, the W213. And we're talking about that in a separate episode. As I mentioned, we do have that one. And we're kind of comparing it in spirit with this one. But for the most part, you're looking at what the best of the best was for the E-Class back in the 90s and obviously late 80s as well. With that power and a naturally aspirated V8, not only is it fantastic for a 94, but even by today's standards, you really can't find that, especially in a new car, just because everything is turbocharged or supercharged if you go up to something with a little bit more power. So if you want that just straight power out of it, you're not able to get much else. But that's why these cars are so fantastic. That's why I was so excited. I've been looking forward to do an E500 for years now, pretty much ever since we started doing Test Drive. It has been on my list of cars to film. And it's so nice having the opportunity to drive it here next to the new one. So much like the 300E and the E320 Cabriolet that we featured a couple of years ago, this car has a very similar road presence. Yeah, the engine is much bigger. They have a lot more power than especially the 300E, as well as the suspension's tuned a little bit to accommodate that massive amount of weight on the front of this car. 
it still drives pretty similarly to those other W124s that we drove. That's what's great about driving a classic car like this is you kind of get the same experience despite the fact that the engine is better and arguably this is the one to get. You know, you can still buy a W124, not necessarily an E500, and get it for a pretty good price. Because they are considerably reliable, you don't have to worry too, too much. We'll talk about that as we wrap up. But finding one of these is kind of the tough part. You want the best, this is the best, along with the AMG Hammer. They have pretty similar performance, but this one's just a little bit more tame, a little bit more livable on a daily basis. And the fact that you don't have things like any enhanced safety tech, you've essentially got stage one airbags on the front here, so they'll probably kill you if you get into a serious accident anyway. But the point is you don't have that safety tech and that's a great thing for a car like this because you just wanna be able to feel the car and you do, you feel it a lot more than these new cars that are just loaded up with technology you still have a bit of a connection to the car. Yes, it uses a four-speed automatic transmission. Yes, you're gonna be running at 3,200 RPMs on the highway, but you sacrifice that. You sacrifice the fuel economy because you want something that's different. And yeah, I talk about it all the time. I mention it in a number of the videos that we do when we're talking about these classic cars. Anybody can go into a dealership and buy a new Mercedes, but take somebody with dedication, with patience and taste to buy a car like this because it does require some extra love and care. Finding them are difficult. Finding the right one is difficult. Getting the right color combination that you want is not easy to find, especially if you're in the market for a car like this where they didn't make a whole lot of them, especially for the Canadian market. So your options are limited. You're looking at something that is truly spectacular. And unlike the E55 that we did, the W210, I mentioned, yeah, it's more understated, kind of blends in a little bit, unless you knew what you were looking for. Same goes for this. If you don't really know about the E500, you just see the badge and think, okay, it's an E500. But when you look at it, the fender flares are so huge, especially by today's standards, that it really stands out and it has a striking look to it. This is a car that we will never see again, obviously. They don't build cars like this anymore. Yeah, they built 2.5 million of them, so there's a lot of them that were out there, but these truly are special. I want to talk a minute about the interior. We didn't really do that when we were on the outside. As I said, you've got this gray leather interior. It's held up incredibly well, considering that this car has 136,000 miles on it. It is a U.S. car bought in California. But the interior here is pretty much cookie cutter Mercedes-Benz for the 80s and 90s, similar to the W126 and W140S classes that we did. You have your AM FM radio with a CD player in the back. You've got your climate systems, single zone climate, works well. It's I mean, not a cold date by today's standards at all. It says 69 degrees Fahrenheit on the trip computer here. We've got the air conditioning on. It's nice and breezy, it gets the job done. Interior is comfortable. Eh, for a big guy or a taller person, you might not be as comfortable. I've put the seat as low as possible, and then the steering wheel, it actually doesn't tilt. It will extend, but it will not tilt. So the steering wheel needs to be in this position. You can just push it in or out. I do fit, but obviously I'm a big dude, so it might be a little tighter. Your mileage will vary depending on how you are as a person. The one thing that I noted about this when we were filming some of the exterior stuff, some of the driving stuff that you'll be seeing as we're driving around here is the exhaust almost nothing out of it and that's typical mercedes-benz it is meant to be a luxury car a fast luxury car but still a luxury car first and foremost so you don't have a ton of noise or drama coming out of the exhaust it's very quiet in fact the most you're going to be hearing is the air intake coming on the engine so you hear more from the front of the car very little engine very little exhaust you're sitting at idle it's very quiet and we've got the sunroof open in here it's pretty damn quiet considering you know, we usually note that with the S classes, but even this is really, really quiet, even by today's standards. Yeah, I just closed the sunroof. It's, it's like, if I turn this off, it's so quiet. Wow, you never know this was a V8. Like, there's literally no sound coming out of this car. I need the air on, though. I. I don't want to suffocate, but there's so little sound coming out of this. It's crazy. It should be illegal how quiet this car is. So let's see here. We'll do a little rip. Oh, yeah. You put it down. Kicks in right away. There's no econ gauges on this. They know that they don't care about that. All you want is power.
But you know what's interesting? Thinking back to the 300E, I didn't watch that video before coming out to film this, but I do remember that I was concerned with how slow that car was overall. Didn't really pick up speed very well. The good thing about this is because it had 322 horsepower new, by today it still has more than enough to get you up onto the highway, keep up with traffic, and still use it as a safe daily driver which is really good, especially if you're using this in the winter. There are some very interesting buttons here. There's a button for snow chains. So you can put that on. If you are putting snow chains on this car, it will change the way the traction control system works and the transmission works a little bit if you're using snow chains. I actually haven't seen that on a Mercedes. I could be wrong. Maybe it was on one of the S classes that we did, but I don't remember seeing it before. So very cool to see that. It's pretty loaded on the inside here. You're not missing anything. No blank buttons, nothing. That's what you want to see from a luxury car. And unfortunately, you don't get that with today's cars. Still have blank buttons, even if you get the fully loaded one. Brakes grip well, too, and that was what we talked about outside. These are really good. Tons of bite as we come up to a stop here. No worries whatsoever. And I would say that's more important than going fast. You want to make sure you can stop, because especially if you're buying a car like this, you don't want it to break. You don't want to hit somebody because the brakes didn't grip in time. You want to keep it. You're a custodian. If you buy this car, you are a custodian of the W124. It's important that you keep this thing in as good shape as you can, not just for you, but for future generations as well. This car should be driven. It should be on the road. It's your duty to drive this car if you buy it. And that's the whole reason this car has that three-pointed star on the front. Luxury, performance, and now for you to be a custodian to keep this car on the road and doing what it was meant to do, to be driven. Fun little fact, because there was so much collaboration with Porsche when it came to this car, a lot of people at the time called this the four-door Porsche. And it wasn't until recently, the last decade, that Porsche actually came out with a four-door Panamera. So it took them a while to get it done, but for a lot of people, this was the four-door Porsche. Considering it was incredibly fast at the time, I mean, they had a lot to do with it. That's why I'm saying it was really Porsche almost versus AMG. We're on a bit of a stretch of road here. We're gonna give it some power. Let's see if we can keep up with this Saturn. Oh yeah, there we go. Goodbye. Whoa, there we go. Effortless power with this thing and just unbelievable how smooth it is on the road. Really is near S-Class when it comes to this. I mean, we're doing 100 which is the speed limit and it's it's driving straight it's driving flat it is so comfortable in this you would be very surprised that this car is 25 years old just how effortless and how smooth this car is on the road if you are really interested in these cars if you want a classic car and want something different not necessarily your run-of-the-mill honda or you know anything like that you want something with some class to it you should look at this you're not going to find anything else don't believe me here we are we don't ever do this on test drive just because we're so far away from the highway we are on the highway 401 right now no problems getting up to speed a little bit of traffic here today but you can see goodbye genesis goodbye prius c hello yukon in front of us we're keeping up with traffic and exceeding it and i mean like it's just effortless i, I know i keep saying that but it's it's something that i really don't expect when you're driving a 25 year old mercedes but this one is so special that it's almost like it's a retro mod. It's like you've taken the shell and the interior of this car and you've put modern tech into it in order for it to drive as well as it does. But it's not. It's pretty much original. Like I said, brakes have been upgraded with the front shocks just to give it a little bit of extra support there. The car is so OEM. You got to get one of these. If you find one of those 10,000, get it. Go and buy it immediately. Because I'm telling you, you're going to enjoy this way more than any other W124 on the road. Just because you can modernly drive it. And not have to worry about being stuck, slowing down traffic, or being on the side of the road. It's the best of everything. Reliability, elegance, luxury, power, you name it. You got it with the E500. As you might expect, this Mercedes-Benz has a level of quality that you just can't find in today's marketplace. The E500's doors close with a solid thud. The trunk has enough room for whatever you might want to throw in it. Yo, what's up? 
and the interior has held up incredibly well considering its mileage and age. Big thanks to James from Throttle House for filling in as our model during some of these shots as well as being our camera car driver. Without him, we wouldn't have gotten the rolling footage of this W124. You can check out their channel by clicking the link in the top right of your screen or in the video description. But let's talk about ownership. We've covered the W124 extensively on test drive over the past several years, like the biodegradable wiring harnesses, rusting body panels, and funky electronic problems. Like any older car, we strongly recommend having the vehicle inspected by a trusted mechanic who specializes in older German cars or specifically on Mercedes-Benz vehicles from this era. It's harder to find shops that have the diagnostic equipment to work on a classic E500, but the W124 is user-friendly enough if you want to wrench on it yourself. Ultimately, these cars need to be driven. The distributor caps can build up condensation if left for a while, giving your engine the sensation of misfiring. And parts from Mercedes are expensive, considering you can avoid this by enjoying the car on a regular basis. We talked about the common brake and suspension upgrades most owners will opt for, but you should also see if the following common problems have been addressed before buying. The electronic throttle actuator that regulates the amount of air drawn into the engine can fail over time due to age or heat damage. The upper wiring harness that we've mentioned before for this era of Mercedes can and will become brittle and is an important element to fix. Mass airflow sensor is an easy enough fix if you're getting a check engine light or rough idle and the engine mounts can wear out over time. Also, the catalytic converters on older cars like this can get clogged up, but for the most part these are pretty simple problems that shouldn't be too hard to fix. The M119 V8 engine is pretty bulletproof, like almost every other classic Mercedes we've featured so far, and the 4-speed automatic transmission is also relatively indestructible, but regular service and fluid changes will go a long way to keeping it that way. Your best resource for these cars is always an online community, and 500eboard.co is the ultimate resource for this specific car. Other Mercedes-oriented forums are great if you plan on owning more than one model, but the 500e board is the most active when it comes to the W124 V8s. If you find one of these for sale, you should definitely jump on it. The E500 along with the AMG variants are already highly sought after, and it's no secret that prices will continue to increase over time, especially as Mercedes-Benz moves towards smaller forced induction engines with their new vehicles. Those who are looking for a unique driving experience with the timeless design of a 90s Mercedes will find that in the E500, making it a very special car and one that we're thrilled to have had the pleasure to drive.